Hi guys, um, I'm sitting here with Yoni and Vilga and um, this video is about um, some of the things that have been going on with Dreamloop um, in the weeks past. And um, as you may have noticed, there's been some releases on, on our YouTube channel just now. Um, the soundtrack has been made available. And uh, above that, there's been some uh, events happening and we're gonna kind of walk through what's been going on with Dreamloop in the past weeks. So first first thing, uh, there was the Wargaming party where we were invited. Uh, do you guys have some something to comment about that? Well, they had good beer. You know, mostly, I guess I was drinking Sire, if I remember correctly. But it was a fun party. Like, it was at like this uh, tank museum, so they had a lot of old tanks and stuff. Um, and then I guess People got to drive up on an armored APC, but it had a really long queue, so I didn't get to do that. And then they had um, really neat fireworks and music and stuff like that. And the weather was nice, and they had good food too. Yeah. But the beer was the important bit. Yes, <laughs> beer and good food. Uh, yeah. That's what makes a good party. And it was uh, it was a good place for the entire Finnish game industry really to come together. There was a lot of people from all the city, all the major cities in Finland, and from all the all the companies basically that you can find in Finland. It, uh, it's a good thing that uh, IGDA and War Gaming kind of like host these kind of events because usually you don't see the people from other other cities that much except like maybe Helsinki and Turku. In addition to that, there was been uh, some some uh, renovations going on. So we're moving to a new office in uh, later this month. Or yeah, early a couple, next couple month. of weeks more. Yeah. And uh, well, Villa we got uh, got to do some renovating. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did my very major part. Yeah, we went there and I went through a wall partially. That's that's my contribution to society. But yeah, it was, it was, it was fun, and it's gonna it's gonna, gonna be cool. It's gonna be a. I mean, I'm gonna miss this place, like this place specifically, because this is our like sauna area, so to speak. And I guess we don't at least yet have anything like that in the new. It's much much bigger, and there's gonna be new people, and it's gonna be maybe more conducive to working, or so to speak. Like it's more of an office office than this one is. Uh, yeah, so that's gonna be fun. God but I guess to start working. <laughs> yeah, yeah, God damn though, it. Though, though, to your to your help, there is going to be like a, like a major, uh, major big area for like a hangouts. Like mm -hmm. we're talking about three or four times this size of a room with full of sofas and uh, tables to people to hang out, really to really connect on lunches and such. But also after work, having poker uh, game nights and stuff like that. And also, you know, uh, a bunkhouse. So basically, if, if you have an after, after work beer there, you don't need to go home. Oh, yes. Go home, yeah. you can actually be Yeah, people one. don't get to complain about night bus fees anymore. So we can just say, well, you can go sleep to the office. That's true. Yeah. So that's a, that's a noticeable improvement. And if any game devs want to visit there, yeah, there's a. At least a few bunks. Where yeah, you, you don't need to get a hotel, so it's really cheap. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's true, also. The hub will be growing from this like a 40 people now into uh, close to 100, most likely 90. Yeah. 90 people. We get, I think, three new game teams to join us uh, from uh, from Tampere, and uh, it's it's gonna be interesting. It's great to have again more. Now it's only been like two game companies here and we even cannot be in, clo in the close proximity of yeah, each other. Yeah, so. The space is so fragmented. Like I, I guess we, maybe we should do some office store type of a thing before we move in this one uh, and then in the new one. That could be something. We maybe you should go through a wall here as well. Yeah, maybe you should break through <laughs> a wall. Here. I mean, this is going to get demolished too at some point. Yeah, it's true. We put uh, FGW soundtracks to YouTube now. And yeah, uh, SGW soundtrack is on YouTube um, and it's available to buy or stream in multiple different platforms as well. Um, it's, that's, that's been a very long project, yeah. I guess. Uh, it kind of just was in the back burner for a while and there was like some 
legal problems, which sounds really like <laughs> dramatic, but like because uh, originally the idea was that Matthias, who composed it, would sell it himself, but there was some like on Bandcamp, but then there was some legislation thing where like you would have to somehow separately pay, like if somebody bought it, you would have to pay the back kind of the taxes based on their country. Yeah, outside the if someone buys the soundtrack, you have to deal with it, deal with the taxes yeah. yourself, and it's a horrible hassle. So, so now we figured out uh, it's not on Bandcamp, I guess, but it's in a lot of other places. Yes, yeah. and it's it's much more handy uh, for us. And like. 35% uh, of the profits go to directly to Matthias, so if you want to support his music, then that's that's one thing, like a third of the money goes directly to the yeah. artist. And if you like what you hear, you should um, check check him out in, on Twitter, I think he's at uh, Shredding Dragon, yeah. I guess. Yeah. It's, there's going to be a link there or something in the description. Yeah. Yeah. Like, we could use this. Yeah, right <laughs> here. Yeah, here it's gonna be. Matthias's yeah. face is gonna be here. <laughs> <laughs> Guaranteed. One final, final thing. Um, as everyone knows, E3 is going on at the moment when this is being recorded, and the all the major conferences are done, and we've had some um, news about new games, some reveals, some trailers. But um, do you guys have any anything that's stuff to your mind. I mean, we are talking about this earlier in the offices, and for me it's kind of like... And this is such a, like a... like a indie hipster thing to say, but like it's really hard for me to get excited about AAA games. Like, I get more excited about the trailer. Like, I really liked the new Wolfenstein trailer for, from Bethesda, for example. Like, the trailer was really cool, but I'm not sure if I'll ever buy the game. And like, outside of that, it's like... Because somehow it feels like... It's the little games that I find fascinating because they are like big ones are they are like spectacles, spectacles, and, but they are like really safe. They don't necessarily innovate very much, or they innovate in things that are not that interesting for me necessarily. So you know, it's it's really hard from that point of view to be like super hyped about E3. But there's there's been a bunch of cool stuff, and I'm I'm probably gonna end up catching up to it afterwards. You know, there there wasn't anything that much. That stands out. Like the, all the cool stuff, like take like Cuphead. Mm. How long would that be? Like, three years. Like it's really cool, but like how many years in a row? Finally, we get the release. Yeah, but it's, yeah, but it's still it's, like it's gonna get postponed. Yeah, right? yeah let's, be, <laughs> let's be fair. Here. Yeah, but but, but in, in general, like it's it's still Cuphead. Like it was cool three years ago. It's still cool, but like it's quite hard to get hyped about it for the third or fourth time. <laughs> like it's it's the same thing, and I mean it's visually amazing. But there's a bunch of bunch of other other cool stuff probably too. But in general, like E3. I, you know, I wish it had more space for these little cool games like yeah, that come on that actually you know push the animal. And I think the last like previous years there's been more. For example, in the Sony conference, there they usually had a space for indie games, yeah. but yeah. now there was none. Like No Man's Sky. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Shots fired. Yeah. Uh, but um, yeah, it's it, this year's E3 has been really sort of a letdown. For me, at least, because the biggest thing I've been hyped about was has been Shadow of the Colossus remaster. Mm. And if a remaster is the biggest thing that <laughs> comes out of an E3, I guess that's a bit of a letdown. Although uh, last year it was the Final Fantasy VII, and I guess that was the biggest thing back then. <laughs> well, being being a little bit of a, a Xbox fanboy, so I I need to love the new Xbox yeah, Xbox that's One true. X. And, and really, and oh, on industry level, I'm I'm really excited to see kind of how it uh, it's gonna change the industry again, how how it's gonna push us towards a new uh, generations of consoles and stuff like that. But uh, on game level, I was surprised to hear that Evil Within is gonna get the second part. Don't get me wrong, uh, it, the first one was not a bad game, but. Uh, Never expected it to become a series, but then again, I think no one ever uh, expect Resident Evil to become a series, yeah. and uh, it, it's from the same same writer yes. basically. And um, yeah, well, my badge is still there waiting for me at E3. Oh yeah, <laughs> I think you should be, get going. Yes. <laughs> my end before you get there. Just Figure out the way to yeah, the my my badge is there waiting for me at the table, and uh, I'm not gonna pick it up. 
And if I had a hat, I would have to take it off for uh, devolve additions. Or yeah, that was, <laughs> that, was, that was one thing I, I, uh, I was going to mention too, like then retaking the fish out of eighth grade hats. So like, uh, that's, that's something we need more of yeah. like in the industry. Like just, just do, like, because it, it, it's video games, but then it's, it's people are selling them like it's, like, I don't know, like, uh, like you know. It's a big money business. And yeah. Anything happens, you know, when, when you get money there, you become more careful and you do less of what the yeah. industry is actually about. Yeah, but, but that's the thing, like, that thing, but then also, like, the lack of self-awareness. Like, I don't think money necessitates the lack of ability to make fun of yourself, you know, like, and, and have fun. Like, it's, that's the thing. Like, me, games are always about, like, being ridiculous. And having, like, you know, way like Nintendo does that, like going back yeah. to Nintendo. But even there, like, it feels like the pressure, pressure is to, you know, you know, make make an open world Zelda game or whatever. Like, like, it's cool. And like, I, I, you know, when I heard about it, I was like, oh my god, this is so amazing. But then when I start thinking, but do I actually want Nintendo to become yet become yet another company that does the mm. industry standard thing and not, not, you know, at least they they are still like playful with the things and stuff like that. But it's still like, it's so. Well, as I said, like there's no self-awareness, so to speak. It takes itself far too serious. Like duck step and like, oh, you know, it's another game about war in the future. Man, with multiplayer. Yeah, with multiplayer, free to play. Oh, actually, no, no, not free to play. Do it, great. That's the thing you've been asking for. You can give us more money. I mean, which, which, granted, like we're devs, we should want money, but maybe not quite as much. And, and not try to sell it as like, oh, this is what you, you wanted, you know, you want, want to buy loot crates. Like, it doesn't quite work that way. Like, you know, the loot crates are not in games because people really, really, really hate money and want to give it away. Like, let's, let's, let's call it that. Yeah. And, and I think uh, Devolver did a good job. I hope people will remember that, uh, that ridiculous show and kind of pick up the message there in between mm -hmm. like you know game industry yes it's about money of course people need money to be working at, at the uh, at the games that you all players love but it should be also about the players not not about becoming the uh, richest media uh, and kind of like most money spending media out there. Yeah, and it's like, you know, it's the culture is organic. Like there is something to be embraced in this life. Somebody called the Devourer thing, like it was, you know, one hour of shit posting live. And like that's that's what we need. Like that is, in a way, that is a large fraction of the market, so a large fraction of the actual core gamers. Like that that is the culture, like it or not. And like to, uh, if we could embrace that a little bit more and like, you know, and not just do like, like as I said, like just everything is, you know, well, not necessarily like totally serious, but takes itself seriously, that would be, that would be fun. Like, just, just do crazy stuff. Yeah. Because yeah. everybody, uh, all the, you know, the, mm, the tone of discussion, so to speak, is that when you make games, you know, you should, uh, especially in Finland, like, because we had the whole mobile thing going on previously, everybody was saying, like, don't make games for your yourself, and, like, don't think about, like, think about the money first and stuff like that, and now we're kind of seeing that, it's like, everybody started doing that, like, think about the, how does this make money, think about that first, stuff like that, whereas, like, I would like to think that it's possible to make a game where, like, just make a fun game, don't, like, completely discard the idea of business and money, but, like, maybe, just maybe start with the fun idea, and then once you have fun stuff that people would want to play then maybe start thinking about how to make money out of this like you know maybe a little bit like you know that i think that's the thing with you know indie and big business that big big triple and stuff like that's kind of like maybe on indie side we can a little bit more try to you know you know make entertainment like or, or you know make like there can be a little bit of hobbies i mean there a little bit of love you know, to doing it not because it's your job but because we love doing it you know I don't know. And may maybe that's something that I feel a little bit is missing from how... Maybe it's probably not missing from the actual games in E3, but it's maybe missing from how they are presented. Because it's so... There's this specific, yeah, it's a, a specific mold of uh, what, it, what everything is pushed through and, you know, that's... That, and, yeah, and, 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 I mean, and then, you, then you see it everywhere, like, then you have, you know, people are like... As I said, people are riffing it, like you know, and like making fun of it, which is the other side of the culture. There's obviously a massive amount of people who are like, you know, who this is not resonating with. Mm. So, 
it would be fun to have something for, for those people maybe. But maybe that's not E3. Mm -hmm. Should we wrap it up? I still, yeah, just, uh, I still maybe have a possibility to make to E3. <laughs> okay, yeah, well, maybe you should get going then. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, I guess that's it for this time. Um, yeah. Well, we'll be maybe back with. We're trying to pick up our YouTube uh, production stuff and like maybe try to do something more like this. While we, like that's that's one big thing to wrap up. So we were here, you know, we were being critical about video games, and that's um, like a hot potato that we've been juggling a little bit. It's like, oh, we're game devs. Can we do that stuff? So now we're trying to do that stuff. So please send us death threats and stuff like that. <laughs> <That's> like, <that's laughs> you know, you can you can post the death threats to the um, comments below. Yeah. Um, and stuff like that. It's um, the most reasonable place. Yeah, it's the, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, the, it's, the it's a reasonable place. It's a, it's a public place, so you yeah. can do that. Anyway. Publicly express your desire to kill us all. <laughs> no, but like, yeah, we, we are thinking of taking it more to this direction because the previous direction that we had for our youth stuff was quite like uh, formal, and maybe that's not something like, you know, that people care about that much. Or even like, like because it's like, it's not like, you know, why would I say, like, I'm not Notch, for example. I didn't make a game that made billions, so what I say doesn't have clout in that sense. Like, I shouldn't, and I mean, well, Notch is a bad example because I don't think he puts in something on a pedestal. But, like, somebody who puts in something on a pedestal. Like, I, I, I don't have that uh, possibility. Well, I could do that, but it would be really dumb. So, instead, it would be more fun to just, like, because we are both gamers and game devs, so can we find, like, a Venn diagram where those two things meet in the middle and then, like, that's what the show. Try to talk about industry things and games in general. Yeah. And, and try not to make us. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 be like, oh, we are so much better than Bethesda. Like, oh God, and Skyrim was such a horrible game. Yeah, like, someone... not Nintendo. Like, what, yeah. what do they know? Like, ah, oh, oh, we are so much better. No, like that's not the idea. But to try to, because a lot of these things that we're critiquing are of things that just, you know. Like, it's not like people are not aware of these things, but it's still you know, fun to talk about. And also it's fun to, fun to listen to us talk about it. So in general, we we'll try to make this thing a bit more casual yeah. and uh, hopefully try to put up more stuff on YouTube yeah. from now on. <laughs> so, until, so, until then. Yes. So long. Buy our stuff. <laughs> Bye again. <laughs>